Hey, you guys. I'm so good. I'm so excited to do this. Thank you for wanting to talk with me. Yes. My goodness. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm here with Tara Stop. I'm here with you. <laughs> How are you? How's everything going? Um, are you in Brooklyn as well? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah, we're in Brooklyn. I yeah. Yeah, we have to meet up when all, when we're all allowed to do that again. That of would be course. nice. Oh my gosh. So I'm so excited to have you guys here. We have some people tuning in, you guys. We are here for Founders Conversation with Lotus Creations Academy. This is our eighth episode. Like this wow. is this is huge. We've been doing this for a while. I think this is my fourth one. I've done a lot. Oh, wow, you've <laughs> been busy. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. So, just just tell everyone who you are. This amazing goddess that oh, you no. are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh my gosh. Yes. No, I'm just you know I'm 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 from a little town in Illinois. My dream since I was little was to get out, <laughs> which I think is a lot of people's dreams when they're from a tiny little place. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I, I grew up dancing. I always loved, you know, going to these little conventions and meeting these teachers and being like, please take me with you wherever you're going to this amazing yes. place, <laughs> New York or London or LA or whatever that was. And, um, yeah, I, I got, I was introduced to yoga in my dance conservatory and, um, you know, my first thought was, this is amazing. And my second thought was, why don't all my friends do this? And why doesn't everybody do this? And that's just messed up that that doesn't happen. Right, right. <laughs> I just thought that, oh my gosh, that's so messed up. So, you know, I never thought I would teach yoga, but I always thought it would be something I would have for myself. And, um, you know, as things lead to another, just kind of chose me in this way. I really did not plan this for myself at all. I thought I would dance for you know the short period of time that maybe I would be lucky enough to do that and then probably work in the costume department or the ticket department or whatever. <laughs> get some sort of job you know but yes, um, that yeah. that always happens I feel like even me growing up as a dancer I've done ballet tap jazz mm -hmm. I, I mean I went to college for dance and oh. now I teach heels dance classes and oh it's my like gosh. completely different <laughs> that's oh so cool gosh. well Everyone, as you guys are tuning in, I have so many questions for Tara. I know you guys want to know so, so much. But first question I want to ask you is, what is it that you wanted to be growing up? Like, I know you were talking about, you wasn't sure this was going to be the field, but like, explain to them what is it specifically that you were like, that's what I'm going to be when I'm older, even if it's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, so I, I always wanted to move to New York and I always wanted to dance. So, and, and my understanding of that was just Broadway. That was just it. So I thought, okay, yeah. that'll be it. And then my parents were telling me, what are you talking about? You're never going to make any money doing that. You know, just very practical. So yeah. I went to this Catholic school and I thought, okay, well, my big plan will be, I'll be a nun and then I'll get free rent. <laughs> Yes. And, you know, I can give back a little bit, whatever the nuns want me to do for work. I can, you know, do the work that the nuns, you know, tell mm -hmm. me to do. And then I'll, I'll escape at night and go dance on Broadway. So that was really, oh, yes. yeah, I really didn't have a plan other than that. I mean, you know, as I learned about the, the behind the scenes of religion, I just thought, okay, I have to actually get a job and then dance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was more of my plan. I thought I would, you know, kind of figure, figure it out and just be involved in dance somehow. But but yeah, since yoga kind of got me, you know, it, it, it just, it, it took me away from that in a strange way. But in this way, I thought, okay, this is kind of wild. I have to just keep going with it. So yeah. and you, you never, you never know. You try something, you, you take a different path and it leads you somewhere else that you never True. imagined. So True. that's really awesome. So what was the journey like leading up to your first big break? Oof. Well, you know, it, it's funny. I think now young dancers have so many other 
cool opportunities with video and all of the amazing things that you know you can see you can actually learn when you're from your small town you can learn from online i just right away to me went to like see frank hatchet at some convention i'm learning like, yeah <laughs> So, you know, I love, I love that, but my, I remember my, one of my sort of um, frustrations was the only people that could come to the show were, you know, wealthy people or people that could afford a ticket in the space. So, and then I remember seeing, I don't know if I saw an Alvin Ailey production or one of my teachers was, was teaching us the technique, but something about um, one of the dances where they brought everybody into the stage, like they brought regular people up onto the stage. Yes. And then that's the point where I'm like, oh, I want to dance with people together. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so that's kind of what made it okay for me for, with, with yoga to kind of continue with that. So I think as far as, you know, big breaks go, um, you know, I started a small studio and that was it, like people started coming because I guess I was doing things quite differently, but I didn't know that anybody would care. You know? <laughs> It's always as like you do, as you the as you feel like you're the only one in the world who's thinking your thoughts and you're doing this thing by yourself and then people come and they agree with you and you know, you're kind of like, okay. So um I guess the first big thing that happened was a friend of mine was coming to the class and she was writing for Huffington Post and she said, Do you wanna write for this blog? And I said, Yeah, sure, whatever. So I wrote this was the beginning of Facebook before smartphones and I wrote <laughs> You know, kind of corny headlines like help I'm addicted to Facebook, five yoga poses that, you know, can save your life or, you know, what do you do if your boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with you, five yoga poses that will help you feel better, you know, and just not in this, this in a tongue in cheek way being like these yoga poses aren't going to cure you. But right. <laughs> if you do them, you'll start to feel better. And that was kind of in, I was kind of in on the joke of it. Um, but those blogs started to get a lot of views and I mean, I was so naive. I didn't know what that sort of meant in internet terms. You know, this was a long time ago or whatever, but that led to me being able to, um, do more things and write a book. And I met Deepak Chopra kind of secretly, yes. and then I met Jane Fonda. So I yes. like all these people, you know, when you're doing these things that you're su supposed to be doing on your path, you know, these people just came in, my heroes just kind of came in and said, I like what you're doing let me help you or let me do a project with you. Let me pull you along. And that, that sort of built a lot of momentum for me. And it just, you know, instilled an even deeper level of gratitude of just, man, like when you're doing your thing, just stuff happens and you have no idea where it comes from. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, I always tell people like, if, if you're meant to do something, like yeah. it would happen and it would happen in ways you don't even, you're like, how would I ever even get the money to get a studio? If you need a studio, it will happen. True. It's so true. So true. But I know you mentioned a lot of great people that you've met on your journey, but who are some of the people that inspired you to get to where you were? I know you mentioned a few, which I'm, I'm assuming they were your inspirations, but is there anyone else that kind of inspired you to lead you where you are now? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, just people that, I mean, some non-famous. I think the first time I ever took this yoga class, Yes. was this guy and he was sitting in the front of the room and he was just happy for no reason at all Aww. and i thought i i want to have that quality for myself and i think that's just completely amazing so i think that that kind of kept me going on that but um you know there was one dance teacher that i had eileen Cropley, and she was an original cast member in paul taylor company and um, i loved choreography yeah so it's like all these things kind of come together so i thought you know maybe after dance i would you know do some choreography and things like that but it really makes sense now with yoga and having the form and you know getting to do that with other people. Um, but she really, you know, I, I always maybe had low self-esteem about it and thought I needed to do like choreography to Vivaldi and you know the violins and all that kind of crap. Oh. But, but I really wanted to just do something wild and crazy all the time. And she always kind of um, encouraged me to do that. So I I did this kind of funny piece making fun of step aerobic video. <laughs> But it was more like, I think I'd seen a video of Stomp, more of like that rhythm of mm -hmm. people coming up and down. And there was a funny guy who couldn't quite get the rhythm right and everyone was together. So I think, you know, she really inspired me to just think outside my own ideas of what I was capable of. And then, I mean, once I got to New York, everybody's inspiring. <laughs> you know, uh, yes. <laughs> everybody's doing something. I mean, one of my, my first month in New York, I remember I would just walk around and try to meet people. Mm -hmm. And I, I got an audition for a Matthew Barney movie, and it was this weird artsy film for dancers. They had some dancer parts. 
And I got, I got this part and it was filmed at the Guggenheim and it was all these Rockette girls and then me. And I remember being like, why did you pick me? Oh, there's all these Rockettes and I just moved here, you know? Right, right. <laughs> you know, I'm just feeling insecure as you do. And you know, <laughs> he saw that I was feeling like an idiot and he came over and he said to me, you know, I saw something in you at the audition and I, you know, it's a stupid thing. He's like, I want you to put the lamb around me in this one little part of the movie. And I'm like, wow, you took, yeah. <laughs> they took the time out to just like talk to me and be a human. And I thought that was really cool for somebody who was in charge of the whole kind of operation. Mm -hmm. So I think I've had a lot of those little, you know, like signs from, you know, the universe or God, those like kind of inspirations of keep going with this weird path that you're on. Yes. And wherever the interests are taking you it's okay and it doesn't matter if it's dancing in a movie or opening a studio or you know doing a random project like the the forms that it's taking is it's all okay so, oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's so interesting because like i said i danced my entire life mm -hmm. and i knew that i wanted to get into fitness and i didn't know mm -hmm. like how and i started teaching at the studio doing dance cardio and cool. i had a whole new instagram made like not from college and I got a lot of recognition from that Instagram and mm. just doing fitness. And I'm like, I know I wanted to do fitness, but I didn't know it was going to end up like this. <laughs> but it's just amazing how you can have one goal in mind and then all these different paths can just help you lead up to that goal that you have. It's so, so cool. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Yeah. And it's, yeah. You know, it's, it's embarrassing too. I mean, my parents, I mean, in the beginning of this, they were like, why are you doing yoga? Like, are you going to become a Hindu? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You know, I mean, we're from a tiny little. I'm like, mom, the Hindus, no, first of all, and like, they don't let you in. You can't just convert to Hindu. Right. <laughs> can't just audition. <laughs> right. Like, I'm gonna be Hindu now. But you know, it's it's just sharing it in a way to feel better and all of that. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's it's weird though because you know, I was. It, it's it, it takes this weird form for me. Yoga is. I never would have expected it, but I'm I'm doing all of the things that I always wanted to do through the form of yoga. I get to help people, so I get to do the kind of nun thing, you know? <laughs> I mean, we, we all want to help people. I feel like everybody wants to help people. You feel Absolutely. better when you do that. I mean, that's sort of the mm -hmm. thing, and if you can find something. And I always love to, you know, move and be in front of people and, and, and organize the groups of the, you know, kind of like that dance idea, but, but having that be more about something emotional than just a performance. Um, mm -hmm. Not that dance, I don't think it's just performance, but you know, adding that sort of human layer where you get to talk to people before and after and it's that community. So it's wild, but it's, it's, it's fulfilling all of the, the, I don't feel like I'm missing out. I don't feel like That's it's a plan, yeah. you know, so it's crazy. Love that, <laughs> love that community aspect. Yeah. So what is your creative process like? Oh my gosh. Well, I, I, I kind of, the most I can kind of reflect on that is I'm, I'm always thinking about this stuff because it's so fun for me and I love, yeah. you know, I think probably it sounds like for you too, you, you do something, you see if it works and then you keep doing it or you change it a little bit. Yeah. And I think from, you know, I, we probably have this in common too, just from studying dance, you have that sort of discipline and it's not, doesn't feel like my feelings don't get hurt if I have a bad idea and I'm not like, oh, that was an idea. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, I'll just go this way and then, then go over here. So, you know, I think for me, it's just seeing what I can do and seeing, you know, what, what people are interested in. And, you know, we, tra we used to travel a lot and, and do these trainings everywhere. And that kind of fulfilled me wanting to meet people from around the world and be around different nice. people and create that same kind of connection. And so that works. And then, you know, I love the studio thing. So we came up with this partner studio idea and you know, I don't feel comfortable with like the franchise and I don't want to mm -hmm. take anybody's profits and stuff. So we just figured out with a lawyer how to have them license the name and just pay the lawyer fee. Okay. And then just do yeah. it. So I'm like, is that legal? Can we do it? And they're like, hey, the lawyer's like, yeah, you don't, yeah. Have to, you don't have to take all their business like a franchise does. So I'm like, okay, then that, that's a great way to spread the vibe and it's okay. sustainable and it's not, doesn't make me a monster. So that's great. Right. <laughs> So yes. I, think, I think for me, I just kind of go and then see what's working. And then if it's mm -hmm. working, I keep going. And if it's not, I kind of see if I can go somewhere else. I, I have to agree with you on that. I'm like the same way. It's like, just try. Just, just try. try. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have so many people tuning in, you guys. 
listen, I have lots of questions for Tara, but if you have questions, mm -hmm. please drop them below. We're going to answer them. Okay, listen, we know Instagram gives an hour, but we're trying to get as much as we can out of Tara because she's so <laughs> awesome. You're so sweet. You're awesome. I want to oh, do this with you, asking you a bunch of questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I, for, so with yoga, um, when I was in college, I wasn't like a huge, huge yoga fan. Like we, we did take yoga here and there, but it was just a lot of ballet and modern. Yeah. And I remember I had a teacher, a, a sub teacher. So she was also training yoga. And one day she was like, you know what? We're just, I'm just gonna give you guys a yoga class. And I was having <laughs> such a bad day that day. Mm. And it just made me feel so much better. And I know some people may think, okay, yoga is so calm. And like, some people feel like they don't need it, but it's very important. And I know the training behind it is so important. So how, how, is it how is it important for you for training? Like how important is it for you to continue training and to be trained in yoga? You can't just get up and just start teaching it. Like yeah, so how important <laughs> is that for you? <laughs> Even with dance, I mean, the funny thing about it, learning it through dance, is mm -hmm. you know, like the I mean, for anybody, the yoga poses aren't that complicated. But mm -hmm. I think you know, I, I I love what you said that you loved your teacher. I think it's really important that you know, especially with yoga it's just there's so much in all different directions and you have to really go with something you know this sounds so silly but i feel like you know like you go to a restaurant you don't like the food you don't go back you go to somewhere else so, like, but for some reason with yoga sometimes people go to one style and they're like i didn't like it but i feel like i should keep going because there must be something wrong with me and it kind of warps into some you're doing something you don't enjoy doing that way when you can kind of look around or now with the internet just scroll through and find yes. Something. Yes. <laughs> so i think you know it's it's so easy now to to find a style that that connects with you and and also that you can not just take the style and then pass that on but but find what's authentic in it for you and sort of have time to marinate just like you're learning anything else i think the the technique is wonderful but you also you don't want to be a robot of the right. technique. you want to have your own ideas about it and and, mm -hmm. and that takes time too so i mean my, my ballet teacher saw i was interested in yoga and he he gave me this giant book called autobiography of a yogi and i'm like what the heck is this <laughs> you know like 18 i'm like what is this and then so i read the whole thing and there's a place on the back in san diego where you can go and i like saved up some money and i got on a plane instead of christmas i went home i went to san diego to like go to this weird place right and I was like, honestly, I was like, this is weird. <laughs> you know, like, for me, as like, a two year old, I didn't quite understand the whole like aspect of yoga where sometimes people, when they get a little bit older, are lost and then they find yoga as this refuge. And I was just wasn't at that point in my life. I was like, you know, I know I'm not perfect, but I, I want to do this in a way that makes me feel good and doesn't make me hide from the world. So I'm going to keep looking around. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so like, as, you know, a, as a yoga guru, what keeps you leveled? Because I know, like, like I said, a lot of people may not take yoga all the time. But when I take it, I feel so good. But what keeps you leveled as a yoga guru? Oh, my gosh. Well, I guess, first of all, I don't think of myself as a guru at all. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I found a practice that helps me feel better. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, I, I feel like also teaching trainings, it's, it's a real, it's helped me go work through my own process of, well, how can you become a not good guru and how can you stop that in its tracks? And I think mm -hmm. stopping in its tracks is always like, if somebody comes up to me after a class and is like, oh my God, you changed my life. I love you. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to eat. You know, I have to take a step back and be like, thank you, but I showed you this process and you did it yourself. And yeah. you know, I can share with you some recipes and some healthy things that I can maybe introduce you to some other people. But I think it's, it's really important for me to understand that, yeah, I, I, I can help people feel better and it's really a good feeling, but I don't want to own them in that way. Mm -hmm. And I know that that just wouldn't feel good for me. So I, I just kind of think about that a lot and then you know, see what, what goes wrong, not just with yoga gurus, but like people in all kinds of power <laughs> positions when they're like, oh, I'm awesome and you suck, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I think that's, that's that kind of basic thing that could go wrong, like being too pretentious or not, mm -hmm. you know, just, I think you could have plenty of confidence in, in your ability, 
but then also empower somebody else that they've done something wonderful for themselves. So yeah. I don't know. I just I think about it a lot. So. <laughs> That's so awesome. So I know your teacher gave you a book at 18. You're like, what am I doing here? But <laughs> how long did it take for you to really like, I guess, perfect your craft, at least, at least for me to be able to go and take yoga with you, you know, <laughs> I know you're like, I won't consider myself a guru, but you know, strong enough to say like, I'm, I'm going to Tara Styles because she's awesome. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Uh, well, you know, it, it's, it's funny because I think with a lot of things, you, I, I can look back at that now, but during the process, I was always kind of doing it as a hobby for fun, even when I was doing teacher trainings and stuff like that. I mean, I was 20, 21 years old when I did a teacher training and everybody in my teacher training was like 35 and 45. So they were, I couldn't really relate. I mean, they were right. nice people and we're still friends, but they were just coming to it at a different point in their life. Um, so I, I felt like the little kid, you know, like yeah. the punky Brewster. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to tie myself down to having a schedule at a studio. What if something better comes along? Right, yes, <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> exactly. But you know, things just started, opportunities just started happening that were that were fun and good. So I think, but I think it did take at least five years of having it be a hobby in order mm -hmm. for what I was doing as a class for Pete to get that constant feedback of, oh, this is really great. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna bring my friends or, oh, this is really great. You know, I'm mm -hmm. gonna give you another opportunity. So like mm -hmm. once that started to happen, I knew that Oh, what, whatever I'm doing is it's I'm repeating it all the time, and I'm, and I'm also improving, but it's also good enough to, you know, to keep people kind of coming back. Oh wow, that's <laughs> it's amazing! It's amazing. Um, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. Sure. <laughs> Can you show them a little something? You know, we gotta <laughs> see it. I know you have all the space behind you. All right. So I feel like you're prepared. <laughs> oh my God, sure. But we want to see something. Okay, Any, anything, in, I'm putting my hair back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Gotta get, gotta get ready, ready y'all. Well, I feel like, you know, the, the neat thing about how you can approach yoga too is, and I, and I love this idea that, you know, how you move, how you move, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I really love to share the, the ease that it can be like, you can do something that's supposed to be challenging, but you can make it easier. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen the first time, but you can approach things in a more easy yes. way. So, I, know, so, I know there's people at home that's trying this right now. I feel it. Okay. So I mean, maybe, maybe in a forum stand, this is a good example, because a lot of times, you know, people are taught with yoga just to kind of kick and kick and kick and kick and like pray to God or whoever you pray to that it just happens. Right. And, you know, you're going to crash on your head. So, it's gonna happen. so, you know, I love this idea that, you know, obviously you set up a, a good foundation, but you also don't have to overwork your muscles. You don't have to like clench your arms or like jazz hands, your fingers or do any of this stuff, you can start to just move from your mm -hmm. middle a little bit more. So, you know, this idea of if you're just rolling here from your hips, then it's a lot easier to just kind of move around. Oh my gosh. Your hips that way. And then you can do whatever you want because it's coming, it's coming more from the center of your body there. And, you know, the lead up to that, literally, I mean, everybody can do this idea of just, you know, big inhale, lift up, and then easy exhale, come down. But so often, everybody's doing this crazy, like, you know, I'm just going to lift. Yes. <laughs> that used to be me. And then it never works. No. You can it never does. We used, to, we used to try to do headstands in college, and been there four years, still can't do one, because that was me. I, was, I would kick up, and I'm like, is that working? <laughs> I oh my know. gosh, you guys, that was amazing. Like, you guys have to drop, like, fire emojis down below <laughs> because that oh was gosh. breathtaking. If I could do that just once in my life, I would feel so good. <laughs> oh, you can. I mean, honestly, what I learned from, from yoga, because, I mean, I did so many different trainings, and they all, like, said a different way to do it. So I thought, mm -hmm. well, maybe if you just kind of do the movement, it's not that challenging instead of trying to, like, inner rotate your thighs and keep them together and point your feet. You can do all of that, but you don't need to kind of double do it in that way. Yeah. I think a lot of, a lot of people feel like they need to do, even if they're not even being taught that it's sort of like, I must do the yoga correctly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, or even with meditation, I mean, people feel like, I'm meditating, I'm doing it, you know. I look, I look like a statue instead of just, oh, I can let my breath move me a little more. Yeah, relax. Yeah. <laughs> you get so nervous, and this should be upside down. Oh my gosh. So I know we all talking a whole lot about yoga, mm -hmm. but I know you do some modeling as well. And, and we have to talk about this because if you guys don't know, Tara has shot with Nigel Barker. <laughs> you guys should know. Listen, you guys, if you guys watch America's Exile Model, you guys know who Nigel Barker is, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you don't know Google him. But how was it like, that whole experience, like how was it, you know, modeling and shooting with Nigel? Like, how was that? Okay, well, I have to tell you, I mean, this is crazy. So I, when I was dancing in, in Chicago, that's where I went to school, I started working with Aria and there were, used to be Ford, or there are now Ford models. So I was kind of doing a little bit of that, like very commercial stuff, like Coca-Cola ads and like Target and, you know, just. <laughs> like, commercial red. Like, hello, here's some water, but you know, super porny stuff. So, but it was starting to pay the bills a little bit, you know, so I moved to New York and I was doing a little bit of that. And then once I got into yoga, every time I would go to a casting, I'd be like, oh, hey, what about, like, we could do this move, you know, or something? And then the more I started showing photographers at just regular castings that I could also do yoga or move my body, the more interesting gigs I started to get as a model. And then, like, mm -hmm. and then I, when the yoga thing started to happen and people cared, you know, about me now for the first time, I thought, oh, my gosh, this is cool. And then when that all started to happen, I, I did so many more photo shoots kind of post-modeling, now which is just amazing another kind yeah. of testimony to follow your interest and you know like now when people take my picture my name sometimes gets to be on it. <laughs> like that's me you know when, when i was 18 and doing the coca-cola ad they're just like they wanted the girl i had like short red hair they just wanted like i was the short red red girl they'd have like one for each category and yes. you know you hope you get the gig and right. it's kind of corny but but yeah, but you know, when you, when you let yourself sort of be yourself, then, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, now, so yeah, Nigel's amazing. So I, his wife, um, Chrissy used to come to the studio. And so that's how I, I knew them personally. And, and he was oh. doing this um, uh, uh, kind of interview with interesting people doing interesting things. And I'm like, are you sure you want me? <laughs> Is they had like really cool people doing really cool things and i'm like oh, I, but think you're this cool is the, too. I know but you know when you see like missy copeland was in it and all these like, really rad people so yeah. um so yeah so they asked me to be in it and um yeah he's just he's was so fun to work with because he wasn't you know he was just very natural and easy and you know they they put me in this cool outfit and we literally just walked down to the subway and he's like what do you want to do here and i'm like you know, he was totally open to ideas and things. And, and awesome. I wasn't embarrassed. You know, sometimes you take pictures with somebody outside and you're like, are people looking at me? <laughs> you know? Even if looking? it's like a professional shoot, you know, I still feel like people are judging me or they think that I'm self-centered mm -hmm. or whatever. So, but he totally, <laughs> somehow he blocked that vibe and just made oh, it really comfortable. Awesome. And yeah, he's such a, good, a solid, sweet human being. So that is I think so that's cool. why he's so successful. Yeah, <laughs> give it up for Nigel. <laughs> So I'm going to assume he has to be one of your top three favorites, but do you have any, like, who are your top three? And you could, you could, you could put him in order if he's number one or Ooh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think he probably is number one because he's such a nice person and his photos mm -hmm. are amazing. And he's also like good at making you feel comfortable, which I think that's why the, the pictures turned out good because, yeah. you know, I was even used to, you know, doing, this pose or whatever. And he's like, he's like, just do whatever you want. You know, you don't have to do the one that everybody else said looks good or whatever. Right. You know, just, and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I didn't know that yeah, that was okay. So I thought that was nice. Um, there was an interesting photographer. Actually, I, I got his coffee. I, I went to Barnes and Noble when I first moved to New York and I looked up mm -hmm. like dance photographers and this photographer, Howard Chats used to, Ooh. he does all this underwater photography. He's older now, he's in his eighties, wow. but he had like all the, ballet companies and Ailey and everybody in there like underwater doing all this cool stuff so I remember just like writing down his email and the person mm -hmm. at Barnes and Noble being like you can't copy information out of books here <laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna go soon I'm just writing down his email <laughs> oh my gosh and I go home and like on my Yahoo account I'm like I just moved to New York I'm a dancer I'm modeling I'm doing some yoga I just I think that you would really like like photographing me so 
he's like, come into the studio tomorrow, I'm in Soho. So I came in and his wife Beverly runs the whole operation and he was really nice to me and and I just started working with him all the time. I'm in some of his coffee table books now and, and things uh, like that. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean that I think how you do it. Everybody's got a story, but for me, I mean nobody was knocking on my door like gonna yeah. discover me. You know, I wasn't walking down a beach in Brazil and being like, You are amazing, let's go, you know. So <laughs> it just wasn't gonna happen for me. <laughs> Yes. Sometimes you have to open the door yourself. Exactly. And that's okay, too, you know, yeah. so it's all right. Um, but I think, okay, so Mark Baptiste, I think, is another uh, cool photographer that I got to shoot with once and um, really cool guy, like on the on the on the crazy side of like way too fun, though, in a way, like he's drinking, you know, beer. And I'm like, is this even a photo shoot? Like what's happening? <laughs> And then all of a sudden, you're just, you're just sitting waiting for your turn with all the other um, people there. And then he turns and takes a picture of you. And it's like the best picture I've ever had of myself at that time. So I think like I understand how he created the how he likes to create the vibe too with yes. all of that. So that's his, because that's at, at first I thought this is totally sketchy. Like I'm going to leave. He's just getting <laughs> drunk. Like I have other things to do. And then I'm just, you know, like the, the minute before I get too, too, too annoyed to leave, he's like, oh, let me take pictures of you. And then they end up being really good. So I think he was kind of pushing buttons on purpose like that. So yeah. And that's definitely one of those, like, if you go into a photo shoot, red flags, you're like, something's not right. But then <laughs> yeah. it turns out to be okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I'm sure for a lot of people watching your show, it's like, Sometimes it isn't right, and you need to get right. the heck out of there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, no, this might not be one of those good times. I'm just gonna leave. Yeah, but there was a lot. Of, I mean, there was a uh, hair and makeup, and all you know, everybody okay. was there. So it wasn't just like you know a one-on-one -on -one kind of yeah thing or something. But but yeah, oh, and and you know he's 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 from Haiti, so I'm like, oh, this must be like a Haitian thing. He's got this mm -hmm. party going on, and then I'm like, maybe I'm just too uptight. But then he's I'm like, the I'm vibe. actually annoyed. <laughs> And then I, yeah, I really got a good appreciation for him after that. So. Yes. Well, I know we're all been in quarantine for so many months. <laughs> so many months. And that's why I really love doing all these, like, IG lives. Like, it's a really great way to reach out to people. But I know a lot of people have also been stressed. I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of craziness going on. So what are some, like, quick yoga quarantine, like, tips and tricks and how to deal with this state of panic? Because I know there's people tuning in trying to find their their peace. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know it's I don't I don't think there's any fix to it at all. But I know when it when it first the quarantine happened here in Brooklyn for us, I remember you know just selfishly thinking I need to do yoga every day and I need mm -hmm. to see people every day because that's like yeah. two things I got to do. So you know I I, I just kind of said I'd, I'll do an Instagram live yoga class with people and that way I get to do a practice and people can mm -hmm. connect and all these things so you know I did that for like 101 days <laughs> was so I love crazy. It. Oh my it, was, God. it was so fun but I think you know beyond that I think it's just if you can set like what that did for me was was had me get up in the morning and do this mm -hmm. thing for myself for like 30 minutes yeah. And then whatever else happened during the day was fine because I knew the next day that I'd have that thing again. So even if you can create that for yourself, I think for people just whenever it is in the day being like at five o'clock, I'm going to sit down and do my meditation or do my workout or whatever it is. And then, yeah, it's not, I mean, I don't think anybody is not stressed, you know, <laughs> during this time. So, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's terrible. I mean, even, you know, we were so confused. The 7 p.m. clap, we used to do that every day. And then it was over yes. one day and yes. nobody talked about that. And I'm like, <laughs> I just brought it up. I'm like, wait, yeah, what happened to that? <laughs> well, are, are we going to go back to that now? That was like, that was another one of my kind of touchstone points of the day where, you know, because you look at your balcony and see the neighbors and, you know, everybody would have the tear and like yeah. trying not to cry. And it's just so crazy. So. I think just having those moments during the day where you can say, all right, this is what I'm going to do for myself today. Mm -hmm. And it's not selfish to take care of yourself and just, you know, fit it in. Lots of self care, lots of self care. Yeah. That's, that's what I've just been doing. I'm like, yeah. I don't have to run around outside. I'm just gonna. <laughs> You're doing your thing. <laughs> just nice. do my thing. That's so good. So where do you see yourself in five years? Oh my goodness. Well, the famous question everyone always gets. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> Gosh, I mean, I, I hope to be, you know, continuing doing this in some form. I think if, if, if the years have taught me anything so far, it's that I cannot predict what's going to happen, but I, I can either keep moving positively forward or, mm -hmm. you know, do like self-sabotage or something like that. So I right. think, you know, I said like this year, I mean, this is so corny. I think it comes from that Jim Carrey movie, but I'm like, I'm going to have a guess year. <laughs> I'm just going to say yes, unless something's really crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's been, you know, I think just, you know, saying yes to people more than projects as well too. And just, you know, we, we just launched an app. So I think that's, you know, a great way to connect with everybody through this time. But I think it's just sort of, for me, finding that sort of balance between online and in-person and making sure, you know, I feel comfortable with that. It doesn't go 100% online, 100% right. in-person, and, you know, I can sort of continue to find happiness there. It's so interesting that you say that because before I got on here, I looked at your website. <laughs> so I, I, I have another question. So I looked at your website and I recently taken my like heels dance mm -hmm. brand digitally. And I noticed we actually are using like the same platform. I'm not going to tell the oh, people cool. what it is. Okay, I okay, know cool. you know. <laughs> and I know what it is. Awesome. It is, but it's such a great um, platform. Mm -hmm. And you have so much content on there. I was like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. But I'm now starting out, start doing the digital thing and I have a few videos out, but do you have any advice for anyone that's like, okay, I've decided to take my business online. What do I do next? Are people buying it? Are people interested? How, how to keep going? Because I've had moments of like, oh, I'm not motivated anymore. Yeah. I don't know if people want to dance with me online. So what, what would be some tips to keep people motivated in, in transition into the digital world? Oh yeah, well, I think, I mean, so when YouTube happened in 2007, I was like, great, I can put videos online. And people were like, Are, you're on the internet, is that porn? <laughs> because at, at that time, no one was doing it and people thought it was like really bad to be on the internet, you know? <laughs> So I just thought, just wait, everybody, wait five years, everybody's yes. gonna be doing it. So I guess I started that and I didn't, it wasn't a plan either. So I didn't care. And I think it's sort of back to that now, like you don't need to have a fancy studio. I mean, you just need your phone now, which is amazing. So, you know, I think for anybody doing it, it's just to, to start doing it. I mean, I think Instagram is, is kind of the, I mean, just in my, I, what I see is the best place to be, to be seen now. And if mm -hmm. you have, you know, if whether it's yoga or fitness or anything, just putting yourself on a live and doing it and then saving it to your IGTV and then just having it be up there and being like, okay, I'm gonna do this every every morning at eight or every Friday night at seven or something that won't drive you crazy, something that mm -hmm. you wanna do. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident if you do something that you love that other people will find you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they will. Also now I think it, it's hard because people, you, you know, there's, you can spend all day looking at everybody else. And, yeah. and I think that that's probably a terrible thing to do and almost impossible not to do it at the same time. So I think, it, you know, whatever tools you can have to say, okay, I'm going to check everybody else out from like 9am to 930. And then I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to focus on what I want to do. Yes. And, and enjoy that. And I can look at everybody for inspiration, but the moment I see my anxiety creeping in or my mm -hmm. judgment or, oh, they have so many followers or whatever. But, you know, I think what I've learned also is it doesn't matter how many followers you have. <laughs> if you're doing something good, the right people will find you and the right people will want to continue supporting you and, you know, buying your, your um, digital products as well. It doesn't, I think oftentimes we see people with you know, millions or hundreds of thousands of followers. And we think that, oh, they must be earning like a hundred million dollars yeah. every five minutes. You know? Right. <laughs> because, and then, and then they tell their, they tell everybody they're earning a hundred million dollars in five minutes. And I think, you know, I'm always suspicious of somebody who tells me how much money they have because they're obviously lying. <laughs> exactly. Like, would you really tell us exactly how well, And if they want to sell you something that you can make that money too, then you gotta, you gotta run, <laughs> run the other way. You too can make 500, oh no, it's okay. Yeah, but I think, mean, you know, if you have, I mean, if you think about online, I mean, I like to think about online, it's the same thing as in person. You know, you mm -hmm. start, it, whether you're teaching at a gym or a dance studio and you know, one person comes in, if they love it, they're going to bring two friends next week. That's true. And, if, and if they love it, they're going to go and they're going to be like, I love this little thing that I just did. And they're going to tell whoever's following them. So, you know, it may take a little time, but you have to just be consistent and, and not worry about 
you know, the illusions of everybody else and all of their, you know, paid for followers or whatever, yes. or real followers. I don't know. It's hard to tell, but it's, it is it's, hard it's, to tell. It doesn't matter, you know, to us or to you or to anybody, what anybody else is doing in that way, especially if it's going to drive you nuts. So, yes, I don't know how people grow up with that now. I mean, I feel, you know, <sighs> like classic person of like every generation is like, I don't know how you kids deal with it. Exactly. <laughs> They, they're born into Instagram and we're like, yeah. we didn't have that. So yeah, <laughs> that's so yeah. crazy. Well, we have a few questions here, I see. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Which one do we want to go with first? Ooh, okay. So we have the only jerseys asking, do you still dance? Oh, I love, I love to dance. So, well, through this quarantine situation, I, like so many people are doing dance classes online. So that's mm -hmm. like totally lowered any excuse I ever had to like get to a dance class <laughs> because I'm just embarrassed you know at, at it for whatever reason but Aww. you know I, I love I love it and I, I don't want my feet to bleed all over the floor because it's been so long <laughs> so yeah I've, I've like taken some um I think it was Paul Taylor classes online but it's kind of cool because I really I remember you know when I was studying like being a little bit more wanting to get the form right especially with like Taylor and Graham and being a little mm -hmm. too like I don't know, like respecting the form a little too much. And now that I don't care, I feel like I'm, I dance better now. <laughs> in that way. I mean, I'm not going to go audition for like Martha Graham. Right. Soon, but I, I feel like it's so much more fun and I can't wait yeah. to go and take classes again because it's just really, really It's fun. so important to just, like when you could just have fun with it, it makes it so much better. You're not like stressed <laughs> out. Even for me, I'm like, I'm not in class. I'm not getting a grade for this. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me know if you want to take some heels class. Let's, let's go. Yeah, I'd love to. I'll let you. Oh, my gosh. I can't totally wait. Different vibe. Totally That's different good. vibe. That's good. That's good. Bring it on. Let's see. Okay. So David wants to know, what are some challenges you face on your model journey? Oof. So Ooh. many. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Well, I guess. Okay. So my first big decision, not big decision, but, you know, when I was, I think I was 17, and this woman, Marie Anderson Boyd, um, she was the president of this agency called Aria. Mm -hmm. She brought me in her office and she's like, you have dancer calves. You need to either get rid of your dancer calves. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do people with like different bodies than me have to deal with? If like, what? I'm dealing with dancer calves, like I'm, you know, a relatively small person. So she's like, but she was just telling me about the reality of the world of that time. I mean, now mm -hmm. I think it's, probably a little different but she said you could just you know go to the sauna and lose your dancer calves I'm like but i want to keep dancing so i, I right I, I, need I need them so but then she said so you can either do that and then i'll send you to europe and you can like do the shows and all of this whatever or you can do commercial work and i was like what's commercial work you know you mean like I had no idea. So she, you know, she told me about TV commercials and all these things. I'm like, well, that sounds fun. And she's like, it's not as good as the high fashion stuff, but whatever. And I'm like, well, I, all I know is I don't want to chop my caps off. Exactly. I want to keep these and model. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a horrible injustice, but she was just telling me what was going to happen out there. And I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. But it was actually a great decision because, you know, I, I, I did the first job for Coca-Cola and it was like a few thousand dollars. And that was more money I'd seen in my entire life. So I just bought a plane ticket and went to New York. <laughs> kept going. But, but I think for me, it was more like, you know, trying to find a way to fit in where I would get work. And mm -hmm. she actually helped me. She chopped my hair off and like had it be red and kind of spiky. And that was really good for me to sort of like play this character in a way where I would get cast as like the, the fun one or like the skater chick or the dancer girl or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. But it wasn't really me at the end of the day. So it was sort of like finding a balance between, you know, me getting cast and playing these parts and then deciding when I want to just go back to being me again. And um, yeah, that was like a real decision too, because, you know, most of the other people that I would be going to castings with um, were like had longer hair and, you know, they, they dressed, you know, a less punky way or whatever. And then I remember my agents at the time were saying, you need to wear like jeans and a tank top and high heeled shoes. And I'm like, I just feel like an, I, I feel like an idiot in that, <laughs> but I'll try. So I went out right. and got like the outfit and I didn't book hardly any work from that. So I just realized that I need to just 
find a way to be myself and to, mm -hmm. you know, to do that. And then once I kind of re redid that, it sort of like brought me to the place where I, where I was at the beginning of where I am now. Where I'm like, I'm just going to do, I'm going to walk into a casting and do yoga. And then I just got cast as that. So that was oh. pretty rad. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. I mean, it's always good to just, just, just be yourself. Just go with what feels no, like natural to you so that's like awesome especially i know you come in you're like oh i do yoga you want to see something cool and they're like she can't do that <laughs> so well i think i think even now especially now i mean people want to meet authentic people that are doing cool things and the, like the barrier of entry is there there is none you just get to be yourself so you know i think the hardest part is allowing yourself to have that confidence to walk into the room and be like this is what i like to do this is what i'm interested in. this is what makes me unique and here I am. And if you don't yeah. like it, that's fine. You know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't hear yes all the time, but that was all right. You know, it was sort of yeah. like, I get to come in and be myself. And, and then I know if I don't get the gig, it's because it's because they want something else. But I, I, I also let them know who I am. So, you know, I've often got, you know, made friends with a photographer like that or a casting director call me back for something else. Or I, I met somebody and I had a, a real conversation and that led to something else. So you know, I think it's just better to be yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyone tuning in, remember, be yourself. <laughs> but be it's yourself. so hard. And it sounds so corny to say, but it really is, you know, it's, it's the key. I the think. key, the ultimate key. I think we have one more question. Oh, two more, two more. Um, let's see. So D David has a lot of questions, by the way. Okay, cool. <laughs> David wants to know, who are some of the celebrities that you have collaborated and worked with? Okay, so yeah, I, I feel like I so like hit the jackpot with, with this being myself and then all of these amazing people have just said, I wanna do stuff with you. So even before I felt like I was ready, you know, to be honest. So Deepak Chopra was the first celebrity that I met and he wrote the foreword for my first book. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> and then he That's said to so me, cool. oh, I'd love to, will you come over to my house and teach me yoga? And I'm like, okay, first of all, you don't need anybody to teach you yoga. And he said, yeah, I know, but I, I, I know that you'll come over and, and take me through it without trying to give me a lecture on it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and he said, a lot of people try to lecture me to try to prove to me how much they know about yoga. And I was like, right. oh, I can do that. So he's been a long time friend now and I've got to come to a lot of his events and we've done D DVDs back in the day and videos and apps oh, and things so like cool. that. Yeah, and then Jane Fonda, another hero. So, um, <laughs> So she called me up and uh, and and um, was doing a project called um, it was it was like Fonda her old workout videos and she was doing this thing with like the new faces of fitness at that time so it was Jeanette Jenkins and although she was really popular already yeah and, cool. um, I was like you're super famous already and uh, and you know a few a few other of us and I was the yoga one and I remember just meeting her and she said I love. I love how you share yoga and make it easy and make it fun and you don't have this big kind of um, arrogance about you and yoga often has that sort of holier than thou thing and I want to help mm -hmm. you and I'm like you want to help me that's amazing. <laughs> Aww. So I've got to meet her. Um, so that's been really cool and oh gosh what else oh Tia Mowry which is my uh, awesome awesome girl awesome girl so another DVD project <laughs> she's so fun and just she has like zero attitude at all I she did like this reality show with her sister and um they kind of faked it that I lived in LA and came over to her house and did some yoga and she loved it and she said oh I'd love to do a uh, like a yoga video with you so we did this mm -hmm. DVD together and she was super sweet with me about that and um yeah, so I just I, I feel like I've gotten lucky because every every celebrity I've I've got to work with has been also a really nice person. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I I think that's so important that they're like also like a really sweet person, which is so awesome. Yeah. So so good. Oh my gosh, I think there's a couple more questions coming in. <laughs> I know David has another one. Let's see. <laughs> he said, "Has you have you ever done hip hop dance?" Oh my gosh, I love hip hop so much. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so that was kind of my my first um, falling in love with dance and really wanting to get out and go to Chicago, go to New York. So um, Frank Hatchett used to teach at all of these, I think he passed away in 2013, but he used mm -hmm. to teach at all these like ring eating conventions that we go to. And mm -hmm. um, I remember he like, there was this, you know, big group of all these dancers. There was this little combination and I did the combination 
and he like he pulled me aside and he gave me like a button and it was like the prize mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, this button was like a symbol that i i'm worthy and you know he picked me out of a crowd that i could kind of do this so yeah i love it and i would love to you know go to hip-hop classes and i think the first time i went to la i remember going to was it uh what's it starts with an s slide something Ed, the edge the edge, the edge. okay <laughs> And being like, oh my gosh, there's so many cool, I mean, but LA was crazy because I remember taking a ballet class and everybody be in like baseball hat and like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, hoodie and stuff and ballet. I'm like, oh, that's so cool, you know? So I just love how, you know, hip hop in influences everything. I mean, every, how we move in general and just life in general. So, I mean, well, now I'm like playing D Nice's Club Quarantine and like dancing. <laughs> dancing to that at home you know but but yeah I, I need to learn some new moves because i am way behind on my moves well we we have a we have a i guess i was calling a follow-up question we, our last question jersey would like to know if you are open to teaching a class at lotus oh i would love okay, to Brooklyn. <laughs> sign me up sign me up that would be amazing i would be so honored are you kidding oh my gosh that would be a dream you gotta make it happen yeah we definitely have to make it happen you Whatever guys you want. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Tara, so much. You were amazing. A joy you're to amazing. Talk to. I'm happy that you're in Brooklyn. So I definitely yeah. need to, we need to meet up because I need to work on my headstands, you know. Yeah, we so. can do that in the park whenever you want. <laughs> I'm ready. Be so guys, good. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was another Founders Conversation with Lotus Christians Academy. Again, my name is Naima. If you guys want to check me out, my Instagram is Squats and Splits down below. You can it. check out Tara. Tara, let them know where else can they find you. Oh my where gosh. Else can they find you? Well, in Brooklyn, walking around right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my Instagram will lead you to, to all the other things. So yeah, if you just go to terrastyles.com or astralyoga.com, you'll find a bunch of videos and practices and, you know, all the in-person stuff and that comes comes back again. And um, yeah, happy to, happy to help anybody feel better. <laughs> oh my gosh well you guys have an amazing thursday night tara i will see you i will see you we're around in brooklyn yes and see you for handstands and see you for class i'm so excited i'm so excited too you guys <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you bye see you soon